Today, I would like to share God's grace with a sermon entitled, God, I have come now. I'm sure you all have come now. Amen? <laughs> yes. And you will understand uh, what an what a, what a amazing, what a significant confession it is that we can confess to God that, God, Father, I have come now. So all those who are physically uh, present in the Lord's Covenant Church and those who are joining our online service, may uh, our confession that I have come now be heard by God, so that God may be pleased with us. Amen. So generally speaking, the Bible describes the action of coming back to God as a repentance, as we all know, right? Coming back to God, coming to God, or returning to God, it means repentance in general. And the action of departing from God as a treason or betrayer, isn't it? As a treason or betrayer. So if you look at Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 20, Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 50, I don't have this uh, scripture on the screen. So if you have a Bible, please open it. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 20. But firstly, I will read about uh, verse 11 to 16. This is the parable of the pro, uh, pro, prodigal son. We, we all know well about it, right? So let me read it for you. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. And he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with a loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country. And he began to be in need. And he went and attached to himself to one of the citizens of that country. And he set him into his fields to feed the swine. And he was longing to fill his stomach with the pods that swine were with eating, and no one was giving anything to him. So uh, this story, we are, we, are, we are not going to look at this story with a, with a tradition of you, that the, the first son and the second son, but we want to focus on the second son first, uh, second son today. And we want to we wanna see it as the second son received the wealth and money from father, right, and went away. Well, firstly, what we can notice is, uh, as I said, leaving, departing from father, right, departing from God is treason or betrayer, right? So this second son, anyway, in, uh, uh, he went away from the presence of his father, right? And he spent all of his money, whether it was he was scammed or he was conned, or whether he was just spend all, all of the money, right? Anyway, what happened to him, we can say is he encountered financial difficulty, isn't it? He totally ruined and he totally uh, bankrupt. That's what he, uh, the, his condition and his situation was at that time. However, he remembered his father, right? And he came back and he was restored as a son once again. The Bible says, because he came to his senses, right? Because he came to his senses. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 20, right? 17 to 20, it says, But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? But I am dying here with hunger. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. And he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. So the second son was restored, right? As I said, we are not going to look, I mean, Luke chapter 15 is not our main scripture today. So we are not going to look at uh, in detail or we are not going to look at it in a traditional way. But what I want to say is second son is the figure 
that represents those who broke, those who encountered bankruptcy, those who failed in his business. Whatever the reason, right, he gathered all the money that he could uh, gather, and he somehow lost everything, right? He was a totally, uh, he was a total loser, and he was a fail failure, failure, right? However, although the, what, the, what the Bible teaches us is although we failed, and although we bankrupt, although we, you know, perish in financial term, as long as our uh, mind and soul is awakened, right? as long as we can come back to our own senses, as long as our spirit is awakened, there is a chance that we can return to God and we can be restored. Through COVID-19, I haven't asked people in detail, but I'm sure many of us are really suffering because of the financial difficulties, right? And perhaps many of us uh, could have already encountered uh, some sort of bankruptcy or some sort of really financial, uh, you know, hard time. But today, I believe that God is telling us that even if we encounter physical and financial difficulty, as long as our mind and our soul and our spirit is awakened, as long as we remember our Father God, and as long as we return to God, as long as we come back to Him, there is a chance that your business, your life, your finance, your economy, everything can be restored. And most of all, we, we can be restored as uh, his son. Amen? Amen. Mm. So my brothers and sisters, uh, who on earth among us wants to become a loser? Who on earth among us wants to lose all the money and encounter financial uh, failure? However, man's life, the life of man, is like an airplane, right? The airplane that took off from the land and flies high, but at one time it has to come down, isn't it? It has to land down. Likewise, man's life, there are both going up and coming down in our lives. There are time of promotion, time of demotion, time of in inclining, and time of declining. That is nature of man's life. Although we prefer only to go up, although we prefer only to get promoted all the time, however, Bible says, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to, uh, 1 to 11, but I will read verse 1 to 4. If you look at the Bible, Bible actually defines man's life that there are both time of going up and time of coming down. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to moan and a time to dance, isn't it? So basically, the Bible says there are both going up and coming down. There are going up and coming down. There are ups and downs. There are ups and downs in our lives. Then what is important is, how do we respond and how do we cope with this time of coming down, right? That is important. If we uh, don't react pr properly, if we don't respond properly, our lives may be filled with grumbles and complaints. As you, as you know, one of the main reasons why the people of Israel, uh, when they came out from Egypt, right, the first generation, the reason why they could not enter the land of Canaan was, God says, because they grumbled and gave complaints to God, isn't it? 
So for us as well, to us as well, it is very important how to cope with the time of coming down, how to cope with the downs in our lives. The Psalm chapter 40 is the David's confession and David's prayer. And today, through going through this Psalm chapter 40, Psalm 40, let's learn the attitude of a person who asks God's help in the time of going down. So firstly, he waited honestly. He waited honestly. Now I want to talk about a prayer. When it comes to prayer, many people think that a prayer is either a faith confession or to make a request known to God. Which one is right? Is it a faith confession or is it a, uh, the giving a, a, a making a request to God? Uh, both are right, right? <laughs> both are right. Uh, both are correct and both are right. However, one of the most important aspects of any prayer is patience, patience, patience. Mm. The, the, the founding pastor, Rebel Abraham Park, said, Many people think that by giving requests, by requesting to God what we want to receive, people think that is the end of prayer. But he said, no, prayer includes patience. Prayer includes patience. The waiting, right? The waiting time is inclusive of prayer. So when we say we pray to God, that means we uh, make our request known to God, and we confess by faith to God, also we have to wait. We have to wait until, until when? Until the answer comes to us, isn't it? So if you look at Psalm 40, chapter, uh, sorry, Psalm 40 verse 1 here, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. Right? David confessed in the time of difficulty that he prayed and he waited patiently. He waited eagerly. Then God heard his cry. God heard his prayer. Let's think about a prayer. Uh, of course, the first step is to, uh, the, to tell God what we need or our condition, right? But uh, about it, I want to say the prayer, a prayer is not a speech that pleases our ears or God's ears. A prayer is not a speech that pleases our ears or God's ears. Through the prayer, we should tell God our situation and condition. No need to choose fancy wordings or splendid wordings when you explain your situation to God, right? No need to choose only good examples in your life and, and tell God that this is, a, this is the, what happening in my life, right? When we speak to God, when we pray to God, we don't have to... Of course, if you have the ability to choose uh, you know, beautiful words and the uh, 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 right wording all the time, that is beautiful and wonderful, right? However, not, uh, by choosing, by using the beautiful words or, or, the, or the fancy words, that it, uh, it, God is not hearing, God is not listening to your prayer and our prayer only because the beautiful wordings or the uh, fancy wordings, right? Even without fancy wordings and beautiful wordings, as long as we are sincere to God, as long as we are you know, informing God, telling God what really happens in our lives and what, what, you know, what, what kind of a situation that we are in, that God hears, God hears. It is not our ability of beautifying our situation that makes God listen to our prayer. So if you look at John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, I'm sure we all know this scripture. It's on the screen. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. 
And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. It says, whatever you ask, right? Whatever, whatever. The founding pastor, Reverend Reverend Park, explained that whatever signifies anything, but at the same time, everything. Whatever signifies anything, but at the same time, everything, right? So in the same uh, way that, I, as I said, we don't have to beautify our wordings when we pray to God. Right? Dear Heavenly Father who creates heaven and earth and who, took, who cared for me, who gave me a breath of life. And, you know, we don't have to beautify our prayers in order for God to hear. In our prayer, we just have to present ourselves, right? Present our situation to God. And not only the happiest moment, right? Or not only the happiest events that I say to God that, Father, last week I had a wonderful moment, the great, gracious moment that, uh, that I met someone and we had a good fellowship and things like that. But unfortunate moment as well, right? Unhappy moment as well. Father, my business is failed. I lost everything. I really worry, what should I do tomorrow? Why should I eat tomorrow? Right? Be honest. Our prayer, uh, don't try to beautify or make it fancy uh, when we pray to God. We have to, uh, we have to ask God whatever, anything, and everything, right? We have to inform God anything and everything. After we inform and we, we tell God our situation, not because God doesn't know, right? Not because God doesn't know, but that is the step, right? We have to uh, present ourselves before God in our prayer. And after we present ourselves before God, we should wait for the answer. We should wait for the answer. We should wait until the moment when the answer arrives, right? When the answer arrives. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 to 14. Matthew 24, verse 13 to 14. It says, the part the one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. Here, the Greek word for save is sojo. Sojo, you can see on the screen, right? This sojo means salvation, protection, and also deliverance, right? Deliverance. So for, for those who pray for deliverance from disease or very difficult situation, right? They will, when they endure to, to, to the end, they will receive the, this deliverance, right? Their prayers will be answered. Those who need the protect, protection from disease, from illness, right? From viruses, right? We should just pray to God and endure, wait until the end, until we receive God's answer, right? Those who need salvation, also we should pray and wait until the end. The end means when the answer arrives. Right, so this waiting is very important step in our prayer. This waiting is very important step in our prayer. I will explain in a slightly different viewpoint. Let's say if someone came to you, right, and, and asked for advices, uh, Serena or Elder Paul, I encountered this kind of situation and I need your uh, consultant, I need your advices, right? And he spoke to you about few hours, right? Oh, you know, Five years ago, this happened. Four years ago, this happened. And, you know, this develops here. And, and finally, I came to this moment. And what should I do? And then he left immediately. <laughs> Did he get your advices? Or would he, be, would he be able to get your advices? No, right? Why? Because without hearing or without listening your advices, he left already. That is like uh, those who pray but do not 
wait. When we uh, pray to God, when we inform God, when we uh, make God known our, our, our request, right? Then we should wait and listen to Him, isn't it? Wait for the answer. The Bible says sometimes it lingers, right? It tarries. However, God will surely answer. Therefore, when we pray to God, we should wait for it. We should wait for the answer. That is why the waiting is the part of prayer. Endurance is patience is the part of prayer. And without patience, without endurance, without waiting for the answer of God, we may not be able to hear or listen to God's answer. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. It says, For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. Right? So the, all the words of God that God proclaimed and God blessed upon us will be fulfilled. Right? It may tarry. Right? It may delay, uh, linger a little bit. Right? It may come a bit late. However, it will certainly come and it will certainly fulfilled. Amen? Amen. So also if you look at uh, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 17. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 17. Psalm 27 verse 14. Psalm 27 verse 14. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 to 37. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 to 37. You will see that God will surely fulfill what He promised, and God will surely answer our prayers. So my dear brothers and sisters, please believe that our God has heard our prayers. Amen? Amen. For your financial situation, for your physical health situation, also for COVID-19 situation. We really need God's help regarding to COVID-19, isn't it? It changes, it, it uh, mutates at the moment, right? It changes to new kind of thing and it develops to new kind of uh, uh, virus, new uh, thing now, right? People may say, Vaccine is not be able to be uh, found or invented, right? How we are going to survive from this time? We really need God's help. And God said, the Bible said, God will answer. God heard our prayer and God will answer. I believe uh, one day when an appointed time comes, God will surely remove COVID-19 from, from us and from the world. Amen. Amen. Right, so uh, also Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. It says, the being impatient is not God's will. Right? Being impatient is not God's will. So let's learn to wait until the end so that we may see with our own eyes God who is fulfilling answers to our prayers. Amen. Right, secondly, being number two is, he completely trusted God. David completely trusted God. He completely trusted God. We can see his attitude, David's attitude, when we pray to God in the time of going down. And he completely trusted God. Psalm, right, uh, before we go to Psalm, right, uh, David uh, was certainly the one who trusted God for his entire life, right? Thus, he confessed that the one who makes God his trust is blessed. So if you look at Psalm 40, verse 4, how blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust, right? So David confessed that the, those who trust God, those who put their hope and trust in God, they are blessed, right? Also, you can see all the references here. Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalm 84, verse 12. Proverbs 16, verse 20. 
Psalm 146, verse 5, and Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I'll move to next uh, next slide. It says, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, and all these referen references here that confirms that the Lord was with David. The Lord was with David. Right? The God was with David. So David was the person who trusted God and therefore, as the reader, God was with David. God was with David. And because God was with David as the reader, he was blessed, right? He was blessed. His way was straight way. His way was highway, right? Whatever he did, right? Uh, everything was blessed and everything went well, right? It's because he trusted God and it's because God was with him. So when we ask God's help, when we pray to God, right? When we ask God's help, whether for your financial situation or whether for COVID-19 or whether for your health issue, right? When we ask God's help, we should trust Him entirely. We should trust Him entirely. That is, that is another attitude, right? That is another characteristic, another attitude, of those who pray to God, of, of those who ask God's help in the time of going down. That after prayer, we should wait, and also we should trust Him entirely. We should trust Him entirely. For example, uh, have you ever uh, uh, drowned in the, in the, in the in a water or, or fell into water? Mm. I once had, I took my younger cousin's uh, the rubber ring too, and which had a puncture at the time, I didn't know. So I went to the river, and then as time goes by, I was sinking. And uh, at the end, uh, I, was, uh, I was drowning really, and then the rescuer came and, and saved me. Uh, well, anyway, what we know, what we, what we, what we, what we know about this, uh, the situation of drowning into water, right? When a paramedic or the rescuer comes to you, you have to entrust your body to them completely, isn't it? They say what? If you try to get hold of them, right, then the rescuer doesn't come near to you, isn't it? The more we try, the more we strive to get hold of them, the lesser they come near to you. Why? Because it can make both of us dangerous, right? So when we really completely gave up, right? When we completely entrust our entire body to the rescuer, that is the moment rescuer comes and uh, take us and lead us out of the water, isn't it? That is the example of how to trust God. When we say we trust God, it means we entrust our body to God. When we trust God, it means we entrust our life with God, to God, right? We give everything to God. We completely gave up and, and give it to God and ask Him to, to save us, right? And help us. In the Bible, though the, in the Bible, there are many scriptures saying that those who trust in God, right? Those who trust in God, uh, they are blessed. If you look at Psalm 48, verse 12. Psalm 48, verse 12. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in thee. And also Proverbs 16, verse 20. Proverbs 16, verse 20. It says, He who gives attention to the word shall find good, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who long for him, who wait for him, who uh, trust him, right? Now, uh, finally, Proverbs 
chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Amen. So as I said, as I uh, gave you an example of a, a person who is drowning, right, or, and, the, and the rescuer, when we ask God in prayer for His help, we should entrust ourselves to Him completely. We should entrust ourselves to Him completely. And we should not lean on, we should not depend on, we should not uh, trust our own ability or our own understanding, right? In our prayer, we ask God, Father, God, Lord, help me, right? Heal me from these uh, things. Then when we go out, we look for something else, right? We, we depend on something else. That is not a, a way to trust God, right? We have to completely trust Him. We have to entrust ourselves to Him completely. When we entrust ourselves completely to God, He comes near to us and get hold of us and will save us. Shall we look at Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 to 8? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. For he will be like a tree planted by water that extends its root by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green, and it will not be anxious in the year or drought, nor cease to yield fruit. Amen. That is the blessing who trust in the Lord. Right? And I pray and bless all of you in the name of the Lord, that may such blessing be given to all of you. Right? Trust in the Lord. Entrust ourselves to God, right? Then you will receive such blessing. So conclusion for today. Conclusion for today is that we should come to God. We should come to God. If you look at Psalms chapter four, uh, Psalm 40, verse 6 to 8. Psalm 40, 6 to 8. This is the main main theme today, right? This is the most important part today. God told David in verse 6 what he is looking for, right? Sacrifice and meal offering thou hast not desired. My ears thou hast opened. Burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. So God said to God informed David, I am not looking for sacrifice. I'm not looking for meal offering. I'm not looking for bunch offering. I am not looking for sin offering. But I am looking for what? In verse 7, Then I said, Behold, I come. That's what David confessed, isn't it? So David understood. Ah, it is not a sacrifices that God is looking for. It is not a offerings that God is looking for. It is not a service that God, I mean, yes, they are all important, right? Service, worship, praise and prayer, offerings, everything is so important, right? However, if there is no us in them, right? No me in them. It is an empty service. It is an empty worship. It is an empty praise. It is an empty offering that God does not uh, please with. So in the end, David confessed, God, Father, I am here. I am the one you are looking for, right? I am here. I am here. I am here. Are we here in this sanctuary entrusting ourselves completely to God? Or are we out there somewhere in the world fearing COVID-19, being filled with all kinds of worries now? Where are you at the moment? 
Are you in front of God? Amen. Amen. I pray and truly bless that may all of you stand before God right now at, the, at this moment. Let's come to God. Let's come to God. Right? God wants us to come to Him and come back to Him. God wants us to see us in this service and worship. So let's present ourselves to God. But also, if we go back to introduction of today, to come back to God means what? Amen. Repentance, right? Repentance. In the Bible, to come back to God means repentance. So David confessed, I have come, I come, I have come back to you. That means what? David is repenting before God. Ah, it is not a sacrifice. Yes, the sacrifice is up for the repentance, right? But it is not a, it is not a, uh, the, 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 what, the ritual, right? That is God is looking for. But what God is looking for is my repentance, right? And David is saying that I have come and I am repenting before you. I am returning back. I am returning to you. I come back to you. In the Bible, there are more occasions when God ordered to come than to go. There are more occasions God ordered his people to come back or to come than to go. To go is a command to spread the gospel and evangelize people, right? To go to the remotest, even the remotest place to spread the word of God and be a witness of Jesus Christ. Whereas to come is a grace to meet with us face to face. When God says come, means God is going to meet with us face to face. God is going to embrace us. God is going to lead us into his bosom. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. It says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Amen. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like oil. Right? Come. I will sort it out for you. I will solve your problem. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. Amen. So today, I believe God is uh, informing us and God is telling us that we should come back to Him, right? We should come to Him. When we come, I believe all these blessings, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1, right? All these blessings will be given to us. God says, yes, well done, my son and daughter, right? Come to me, I will heal you. Come to me, I will comfort you. Come to me, I will fix you. Come to me, I will solve your problem. Today, I really pray honestly that we may see our God, the Father, who's proclaiming this blessing upon us. Come, I will take care of you. And I pray may all of us become the people who come back to the Lord, come back to Jesus, come back to our Father God today.